comfortable. It is. Good away from the weather and everything. It's only about 70 degrees in here right now. But yeah, see all the dark residue? Yeah. That's, That's smoke. That's all ash smoke. Yep. Oh. Cool, huh? Yeah. And then, and this is the scene they would see. Mine's the bridge in the freeway. Yeah. Okay. Let's check out that other cave. Okay. See all the all the clean face on the rock? Yeah. That's from the last earthquake. This this used to come out. This shelf used to come out much further. Yeah. But when the world shook again. We call that mound right there the shaman mound because we believe that shamans would do their thanksgivings there. Chopin, Native Americans, Shoshone and Paiute. Shoshone, Paiute, the Blackfoot range down here a little bit too. So tell the story again about that mound. I think that mound out there was where the medicine man or the shamans would do their rituals because you tried to sleep there and you ended up having bad experience tell me your bad experience i had one of the worst camp overnight trips of my life it was a beautiful starry night and then i was sitting up there with a little campfire and i don't know i just started chanting like an indian would i must not have been getting the words right because anyway Weather came in, it got real windy. I had to deal with rain and hail and I couldn't get out of there fast enough in the morning. I wasn't welcome, so. That's the story of that mound right there. This Native American winter camp is backed right up to our ranch. And we protect this land from looters, trespassers people that just want to kick it and make a ruckus um, we busted a trespasser a couple months ago that she was drunk and bragging about how she found buttons from over here and we told her that she was on Indian land and that she's didn't do a good thing okay down river yeah down river about the Two miles, three miles from here. Yeah. A big burial ground. Big Native American burial ground. So, yeah, if you find buttons and beads and stuff like that, and bones, like human bones, that's because there's Native Americans there. And you definitely don't want to mess with it or you'll get a curse. Well, it's just disrespectful. Yeah. On a basic level. Yeah. Cool. Okay, let's climb back down and go to the river. Thank you so much for bringing me up here. This is where the Native Americans would rest in the harsh winters. Um, and it was called Broken Arrow because uh, at least three different tribes would come here, shelter together in peace, and survive their winter. I want to bring the kids down here, but I wanted to get a little more robust on their strength, so swimming is good yeah but yeah we this whole thing see how the rock changes color there on yeah. that sheer face yeah there used to be a shelf there and when it shook that all fell but there was little caves and trails and stuff and i used to climb on this when i was the twins age free climb no ropes we would just leave it here more caves in here i don't know if you guys be able to see them but see if you look right there see that great big one there if you look at the coloration of the rock you can see where it all broke loose that thing wrapped around the corner it was massive you see all the cliff faces different colored it's yeah lighter. that means the rock hasn't been exposed for as long look all the way down you can see how it peeled off when when the earthquake happened in 94, right? No, this one was in 2008. Oh. The big one in 2008 that we had here, it was like, uh, I think it hit a four. 
and it just and I missed it. I was living right over there across the river and I saw the cliffs every morning and then I missed it by five minutes. Uh, I, okay. That's where we're headed next. Um, this whole river, stretch of the river is very deadly. Can't swim in it except for this spot because there's undertoes. So that's where we're going and this is what we see. We'll toss a stick in over here where the current's at. I'll toss a stick in there so that the, your subscribers can see just how fast that water's moving. It looks so beautiful and comforting and warm and nice and just float down the river, except that the undertow will catch you and you're drowned. Yeah, <laughs> this, this has claimed hundreds of lives. Yeah, look, look at the discoloration of this rock. This one was one of the big rocks from up there. Oh, wow. This one come and landed here after it shook loose. Now what did you say about this? Right, so if you look, here's a flake. That's a fleck. There's a fleck. Hey, you gotta go there's slower. A, there's a chunk. Here's a big, big chunk. This is all evidence of flint napping of the natives being here making arrowheads and spear points and knives and whatever other stone tools they needed. And that, that right there is razor sharp right now. Matter of fact, modern surgeons use obsidian for scalpels because of the fine, it's one molecule thick. One molecule, that's, that's basically an atom. Extremely fine edge. All right, here we are down in the swimming hole. Eric was just telling me that the water goes all the way up to here. Claire, you can see where the water changes, the, the soil goes from white to brown. The white is the high water mark of the Snake River. And then, and then we've got the cliffs and this super muddy spot. All right, we're gonna find a stick so he can do his throw thing for you guys. And there's another one. You could actually collect muscle. Is that a living muscle? No, this one's not. But there are living mussels in here. And you can eat them. Yeah. Do they make pearls? Where are they coming from? These are freshwater mussels. Oh, forgive my ignorance. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, they do make itty bitty tiny pearls. Oh, nice. And they like to bed into these sandbars. So if you go up along the islands and then these washouts where all this sand is, that's where you'll find these guys. Raccoon found this one. You see where it broke here? Yeah. Raccoon broke it, pulled it open, and ate the uh... living organism inside. Yep. Nice. One tasty little dinner at a time. <laughs> Hold on. Yes. The wind is in a perfect position. You think you're tossing it down, you're tossing it right at me. Ancient Indian ruins, so you can't really see it. Ancient Indian ruins and artifacts in a variety of the vicinity of this notice are fragile and irreplaceable. The Antiques Antiquities Act of 1906 protects them for the benefit of all Americans. Enjoy, but do not destroy our American heritage. And the rest is just, we gotta have your ducks in a row in order to be here. Someone was obviously disrespectful and shot up this sign. Yep. We found that on the ground BLM right here. Number S53, April 1964.
Ah, sign from Nicey. That in itself is an artifact. 